So in closing, I would like to thank the Soul Home Forum for sponsoring this event, Dr. Bennett, for being a cordial debate adversary, and for each of you for attending here this evening. The underlying question in the climate change debate is whether or not atmospheric CO2 is a powerful greenhouse gas capable of causing dangerous global warming that will threaten our planet. In testing this hypothesis, I have provided you with multiple evidences based on real world observations that it is not. More often than climate alarmists are willing to admit, the historical record defines CO2 as the dependent variable following changes in temperature with a lag time that varies from hundreds to thousands of years. How can a cause perceived to be so powerful often, so often trail its supposed effect? And how can a cause elicit responses that are directly opposite its hypothesized effect? The answer is quite simple, and it doesn't take a climatologist to figure it out. It is because atmospheric CO2 is not the all-important greenhouse gas that climate alarmists claim it to be. Sufficient proof is documented in the historic records. Sufficient proof is also found in the missing fingerprint of CO2-induced global warming of the tropical upper troposphere that observations fail to capture. And sufficient proof is noted in a vast array of real-world data that fail to match model projections for a host of these subordinate temperature-related climate catastrophes. Consequently, there is little to no rigorous evidence that rising concentrations of carbon dioxide are causing dangerous global warming. Now, using another common-sense approach to recognize this fact, let us return to this figure, which, if you recall, shows that all four of the preceding interglacial periods in Earth's temperature history reached values which were one to two degrees Celsius warmer than the present. And they did so naturally, despite 45% less CO2 in the air than there is now. I doubt you would find anyone on the planet, except maybe your local New York representative, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, <laughs> who would take the extreme position that temperatures during those interglacials were dangerous. Yet recall from the comments I made at the beginning of this debate that the Paris Climate Treaty actually defines dangerous warming as temperatures that, that cross a threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial values. Well, as you all know, global temperatures have already warmed between 0.8 and 1 degrees Celsius since pre-industrial times. Therefore, using the Paris Climate Treaty standard, which is echoed by climate alarmists elsewhere, the planet cannot warm another half to three quarters of a degree Celsius or climate Armageddon will ensue. Seriously, come on, give us a break. Such warming, if it occurs, would still place planetary temperatures some 0.3 to 1.3 degrees Celsius below the warmth of the temperatures experienced during most of the previous four interglacial periods, which by no means were periods of planetary disaster. Clearly, the model-based projections of the consequences of rising atmospheric CO2 are way off the mark. Dangerous CO2-induced global warming is not presently occurring, nor will it likely ever occur in the future. Likewise, pessimistic forecasts of ecosystem degradation and collapse fail to match observed trends showing widespread enhancement of planetary vegetation. These and other phantom pillars that form the foundation of all climate alarmist claims are merely the conceptual constructs of woefully inadequate com computer climate models. Real world observational data, in contrast, do not support a catastrophic or even problematic view of global warming. Consequently, I implore each of you to honor science and the scientific method by voting in affirmative for our resolution tonight. Thank you. Okay, well, I won't detain you. It looks like we have the final vote. Uh, thank you, Jane. Um, um, the, uh, the, the resolution, uh, the uh, yes vote on the resolution uh, that there is no evidence that's causing uh, dangerous global warming, uh, it began at 24%. That was the pre-vote. The resolution, yes, at 24%, and it went up to 46%. So it gained 22 percentage points. That's the number to beat. Uh, the no resolution started at 29%. It went up to 41%, uh, went up 11 points. Uh, and so uh, the Tootsie Roll goes 
to Greg. It's so congratulations to you both.